Hi, I'm Megan Brightwell. I'm a designer and an artist and a fiber snob and have been for 20 years. And I am now making masks. Um, I wanted to share, share with you some of my thinking and some modifications I'm making to the standard designs out there. I want to thank Jennifer Maker um, for putting a pattern out early that I tried and it didn't quite fit my face. So she's the reason I'm modifying some stuff. Oh, here's this is something to show. Here is the pattern that I have modified too. You can find it on the link below. Um, it's for these shaped masks. They're not super glam, but they, well, they stay on well if you get them on. They stay on well and they fit tightly to the face. Um, the materials are a little different than what some people are doing. We're still using the standard um, cotton on the outside, cotton on the inside. Um, my filter materials are a little different. Um, instead of just an interfacing, uh, which isn't available right now, and instead of, or having read the Cambridge study, um, the best material was vacuum cleaner bags. But, where did my vacuum cleaner bag go? We tried them, I looked at them. I didn't know if the Cambridge study was including the paper or just the inner lining on the vacuum cleaner bag. And the inner lining is not very structurally stable. So because I was confused and because it was really uh, fragile material, we decided not to go this route. Instead, I found the next best filter material that I could find, though maybe it's better, I don't know. We got the highest quality um, air conditioning filter that we could find. And with as many, down to the smallest virus, rating that we could find. Um, it, when you pull that box apart and you take off the mesh, don't cut yourself, you get a material that looks like this. It does look like interfacing. It's much like interfacing. It has a different hand than interfacing. It's a little more um, water resistant and a little more plasticky feeling than a typical interfacing. Um, it is a different material. The other thing we're adding to it is instead of tea towels, which is another recommendation from that study, I upgraded and went to the microfiber cloths. They are essentially a towel. What a typical tea towel is made from, and I don't know what Cambridge Studies tea towel was made from because it didn't say, but they usually means it's a cotton, multiple layers of cotton or a terry cloth cotton. So if it's a terry cloth, it's in the same, this is also a terry cloth. Um, but this is designed to have some static electrical charge to pull dust fibers into it. So I'm hoping, though I can't test it, that it will have the same effect in the mask. Um, we chose a way of constructing them on purpose. Um, we're putting the cotton on the outside, cotton on the inside, and then the, mic the mesh, the filter, is going towards your face and the microfiber is going towards the world. Um, because if the world sneezes on you, um, I want the sneeze to get caught in the microfiber. And I have spat on this stuff, and the spit, the water will disperse quickly across the microfiber layer, as it's supposed to, um, and it will not come through this plasticky filter layer. So just like in a baby diaper, uh, the microfiber sucks the water out and away, and just being a different material, the water doesn't seem to come through here. And by the time you get out to your cotton, I mean, you can't feel it on the fiber here, and so you're, you stay dry, it stays dry. Um, also, we've chosen this method because I want this to slow down the air and create as much turbulence in the air as possible so that any of those little tumbling particles have as much chance as possible to get tacked into, tra trapped into one of the walls, like either the, this or the filter. Um, so, making the mask. First, you cut everything out. All the pieces are the same size. That makes it easy. You need two of, of everything, two mirror pieces of everything. You need two of your lining, two of your outer fabric, those are both cottons, two of the filter paper, and two of the towels. Once you have that, you're gonna make two stacks. There we go. Oh, this has been pinned. 
One stack is a sandwich starting with your lining. Remember this fits to your face. So the right sides of your lining together, sandwich that with your filter, and then your pieces of bread on the outside or your yellow microfiber. Sew that down the nose seam here, which is this seam here. Set that aside, grab your outer material, put them together right sides out and also sew them down that seam. Now you'll turn it. What you're, that, what you're going for is you're gonna end up with this. Now you take your turned lining this is the inside out of sewing. You're gonna open this and you're gonna put right side to right side again, again on that nose seam. Tuck it in as close to right as you can, but we're not too worried about it because what I'm really after is attaching, open this baby up, attaching this lining to the sandwich, lining up that center seam here to here. Before I sew that, I'm gonna add elastic to it. Um, in between my two layers of cotton, about an inch from the edge. So this is gonna go in here, and I don't really care which side of this elastic is the front, I just wanna try to make them both the same. So in my case, we've got the shiny up. And then it's about a generous inch in from the edge. Give that a pin. I can adjust that little bit of the corner there in a minute when I get to my machine. I'm gonna do it again over here with my other piece. The extra is hanging inside the, the mask or inside the sandwich. Line these up, add a pin. And that's all, I don't wanna pin this very much because I don't actually know how much that filter material is gonna heal from holes from a pin. So I wanna keep them as minimal as possible. So I'll take it just like this to my sewing machine and sew across this top edge. That's gonna end up looking like this. So now it's sewn across the top edge. And once that's in, that's pretty secure. I can take those pins out, I don't need them anymore. I'm gonna pull my elastic out of the way, make sure I'm not gonna catch that. And I'm gonna sew along the bottom edge. I'm not gonna sew from the sharp point to the sharp point. That's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sew from here across to here and across. It's a fairly short seam. Then I'm gonna turn it. I'm gonna turn it between the lining and the facing. These are UGA colors for my niece. Now, this is my front. And you kind of have to fuss with this to get these things to line up. And you wanna, as much as you can get, see how it's rumply in there? As much as I can get that to pull flat, the better I'm gonna have, the better the feel's gonna be inside. Once I've turned it to so the top of my elastic is, elastic is already in, and then I'm gonna run a casing seam for my fabric. And I'm still adjusting this. I've gotta get part of that lining to fold over. And it doesn't quite wanna stay where it wants to, where it's set. This is good, this seam is gonna help a lot. I'm gonna run a quarter inch seam along the top, just a casing, a top stitch. It's gonna end up looking like this. Can you guys see the casing stitch across here? Oh, it shows up really well on this one. You see the casing stitch across here. So once that casing stitch is in, then I can do my next step, which is add a piece of wire. This is just a 16 gauge wire, 16, 18, 14, I think any of it would work. Fold it in half. Um, and the two ends are tucked. So it's folded in half, the two ends are tucked. It is running the distance just a little shy 
from the elastic to the elastic. I've got about a half an inch shorter than the distance between the elastic to the elastic. Um, that's on purpose. This is just regular copper wire from the hardware store. I've been using it for jewelry for years. I have a severe nickel allergy and it doesn't bother my nickel allergy. And that's why I'm using this wire. The aluminum wire at the, in the, also at the hardware store usually works pretty well as well. I'm not sure what's gonna be available, what you may have on hand. Um, so then you're gonna put it through that casing. If it gets stuck in the middle, it's because your um, seam has been was folded over and it's pushing against the seam. I'm trying to find a place where I can show you that. Um, try it from the other side or try between here. When I fold this over, say this is the inside of the casing and I sew something over it, if my wire gets stuck, it's because it's getting stuck in that pocket. If you go from the other side, it's likely to work better unless it happened to get folded open like that and have things on either side, in which case, if you just go between different layers of fabric or between the two linings, you'll probably get in there easier. Pro tip. So this just slides in. Center it and make sure you get it past that elastic and get it centered. So now I'm in there, it's centered. I'm gonna fold it in half. And that's basically the shape I'm going for. Now I've got edges to finish. This is meant to be an accordion fold. Two reasons, one, it gives us more space inside the mask around our mouth so that you have an air pocket in there. Um, also, it happens to provide one more fold on that filter material, which this filter material is designed to be folded. So it's an accordion fold line up the edges. It doesn't really matter whether you fold it down like this or whether you fold it up like this one, as long as you do the same on both sides. Since I've gone up on the other side, I'm gonna fold it the other way so that they match. Um, I tacked this down with my sewing machine over here. Just along here, just to make it easier to work with. Then I have this rectangular piece of fabric that I'm gonna basically make a, just a binding out of. So I put it, sewn it along the edge here. I folded up the corners, or I folded up the edges to be, to cover the edges there. Look, this one I want to be out onto the blue because I think it's, the color is going to look nice on the front of the mask. Um, other ones I've made sm smaller and I've folded them and they've just been real tight. So these first ones were smaller. I wanted the red on the outside of this mask, so I made it bigger. So this is could then just be top stitched down, except the one other piece I want to do is I want to take this piece of elastic, tuck this elastic into this seam here just to hide the edge of it. I'll give that a pin because that's gonna fall off before I get to my machine or I'll forget about it. And then this just gets top stitched down here and across the top up there and we're done. Pro tip, sometimes when these come off, this yellow fabric stretches and this one has gotten, has gone beyond the edge of the of all the other fabrics, it's just quite a bit bigger. So I take my scissors and I'm just gonna trim that down before I move on to the next step. This stuff sticks to everything, which is its point, why we're using it, but it sticks to everything, it's everywhere in my house right now. And that's your mask. This one's too big for me, it's a man's mask. Oh, there was one other. I have one other pro tip, which it, or one other variation, which you could take this on any mask that you're doing that uses variation. <clears throat> this is for my niece who lives in a different state, and I really don't know exactly how big her face is. So I've assumed it's close to mine, so I'm using one that fits me. But I, instead of just doing an 
a piece of elastic. I've done one piece of elastic with a loop on the end and two ribbons coming out the bottom. This way, when she gets it, she can string the ribbons through there and she can tie it on her face to the whatever length is correct for her ears. So if she's got a longer face than me or if she's got a smaller face than me, either way, it's gonna fit. The other feature that I've discovered is when you have um, these ear things on, if you take one more tie and tie it through the ear loop behind the back of the head, that that makes a really secure fit on the face and helps pull the mask tight from both the base of your jaw and from your nose. So it stays on more tightly if you're concerned about it fitting tight. We finished these masks this afternoon. Um, this is what the elastic looks like sewn in around it. This is the one you sewed in inside the seam and this is the one you tucked in under the binding strip. Um, these are the masks we finished. We've tested the materials. In order to make them effective, you have to be able to sterilize them. All of these can be boiled in water um, for however long you want between uses and there are we two sizes available on the link right now a adult woman size, an adult man size, that's these two sizes you see here. We'll be adding some children's sizes and a beard pocket size.